Hi, I'm Andrew from the National Parks of Boston. I'm here today to talk about how to make great observations using iNaturalist so you can participate in community science programs like Park Bio Blitzes and the City Nature Challenge. Come on, let's go. There are four basic elements of taking a great observation using iNaturalist. One, a high quality photo or several photos. Two, making an identification. Three, the location of the photo that was taken. And four, some notes and observations that you can write down in the app. So what are we looking for when we make observations? We're looking for wild things, animals, plants, fungus, nothing planted though. This is a rhododendron that I planted in my backyard. I'm not gonna take an observation of this, and not this forsythia either that's coming over from my neighbor's yard. But this here, this is multiflora rose. Definitely didn't plant this, and this will make a good observation. So, let's head over into the app to see how it's done. Here we have the opening screen, where you'll find your account info, a list of your most recent observations, and at the bottom, a menu. There, you can look at other posts, track your observations, edit your profile, and of course, add an observation. Before you dive in, it's important to check your settings, primarily your cellular data and your location services, or GPS. First, within the app, you can toggle through a host of options like having iNaturalist recommend species and make changes to your profile. To make changes to data and location settings, you'll have to navigate to your phone setting menu. Within data settings, you can select if you want iNaturalist to use cell data. If you turn off data to the app, you can still make observations, but you won't get any species recommendations and your observations will only load when you are within range of a reliable Wi-Fi signal. To ensure your observations are tagged with GPS coordinates, be sure to navigate to your phone's privacy settings and give iNaturalist permission to use location information when the app is running. Now, you're ready to make an actual observation. You're going to want to take a few photos. You'll want at least one photo that captures the entire organism, like this. If you're not happy with the first one you take, that's okay. You can always retake the photo. Next, you'll want a photo that features an important component part of the organism. In this case, the compound leaf in greater detail. For a third photo, I've added a clip-on macro lens to get super close-up shots of the leaf stem and the distinctly hairy petioles of this rose. Tools like extra lenses are helpful, but not required. Next, you'll choose which photo makes the best default image. This will be the first thing other naturalists will see when they come to identify your observation. Next, make an identification. When you click on what did you see, iNaturalist will analyze your photo and use your location information to make a recommendation. You can scroll through and look at different species and click the little I to read more and confirm your identification. Once you're confident, make your selection. It's okay to make a guess or just ID it as a plant, animal, or fungus. Finally, check that your location is accurate. Make some notes about what you found and add any important information not captured in the photos. Once you're happy, share it. Let it sync and upload. Now you're ready for your next observation. Ooh, evening primrose. Fancy. There's lots of things you can find right around your house and in your backyard. I'm a plant guy, so my eye is drawn usually towards the ground. Here, come look at this. Along the side of my house, all this carpet of moss is growing right here. Look in places like that. Look at some of the, the corners and edges. Look at the cracks in the sidewalk. Those are really opportune places to find great observations. But there's plenty of places too, right near your house you can walk to, to make other observations. My colleagues, Mark and Rachel, are out near their houses make, uh, taking a look around. Mark, what are you seeing? Thanks, Andrew. This is Mark Albert, here in a little patch of woods near my house that I walked to. Uh, we, I'm here to talk about how we can take iNaturalist observations in the forest at this time of year. Okay, so I'm just letting my curiosity 
dictate what, what, what I do. And what I first see are these little interesting red clusters sitting on the, sitting on the, on this moss at the base of this tree. So I'm thinking, hmm, what's that? What are these all about? Well, first of all, let's get in close. And clearly these are separate from the moss. And there you go. That looks like a cluster of flowers because I can see the little male flower parts sticking out of the top. So, hmm, these clearly do not seem to be growing in this spot. So let me look for some evidence of where they come from. There's a lot of them on the ground. If I look up into this tree, at the branch tips, I can see that there are lots of these little red clusters of of flowers everywhere. Okay, so I'm onto something. So what I'm gonna do, I am going to grab a nice, a, a, one of these that's in good shape. You can see the parts of it really well. I'll take that photo right there, click. And then I stay on the same observation and you choose the little plus sign to add another photo. And then I'm gonna take a photo of the bark like this, click. Ideally, I would love to get a branch tip itself so that I can look at the, the buds, but I don't have that handy because this tree is, the first branch of this tree is, is above where I, can, where I can reach for that. So what I'm gonna do is just get the good angle so the sun's not in the way and take a picture of the canopy and then I can look back later and see what the branching pattern is up in there. Click. The last thing I might do is look right underneath the tree and see if there's leaves, you know, last year's leaves at this point, that might give a clue to what, what I'm looking at here. And of course, different leaves can blow to different locations, but this is what I would do. Click, because that's right underneath it. In this particular case, I happen to know that these are red maple flowers, and this is a red maple leaf, so I think we would be good on that. Okay, moving on, let's find another specimen. Here's something interesting. In this case, I'm probably gonna, this is, it looks like everything that's associated with this plant is really easily visible. So I would take a click photo there. I would look around a little bit, see if there's anything else I need to know. I'd probably wanna add a second photo like this, click to get the vein pattern on the leaf. And it looks like that's just about it for the actual um, individual characteristics I can capture with the photo, but I probably want to get something about where it's growing, its habitat. See how there's water right there? That, that's meaningful in terms of where the, the habitat that it's growing in. So this would be my third photo for this one. Click, and I'd be done. Now I'll pass it over to you, Rachel. Thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel, and here I am at Revere Beach right near my house. It's really, really low tide, and I'm here to talk about some of the really exciting critters and things you can find at the beach. All right, so Revere Beach is very much a sandy beach, as you can see here. It's not nearly as rocky as some other shorelines might be, so we're going to find some different things, but there's still plenty of things to find. If you look here, this is actually on this rock, a couple different kinds of algae or seaweed. Now, if I wanted to take an iNaturalist observation of one of these, I would need to get a few different angles. So let's focus on this one here. One of the important things is that I would need something for scale. Now, if I'm in a field like this, I usually just use my hand. So for something like this, I would want to get a picture of both sides Sometimes they're different, so I would probably take a picture like this. I would get a close-up down here where it's attached to the rock itself, and I might also get an exterior shot of where it actually is on a rock. You can see that it's next to a couple different other things here, so in the notes section you might want to put the, that information as well. Now on this rock right next to it, you'll see that there's some other little things going on. There's all these little guys. Now, 
looking at the beach, you might not think there's all that much, but when you get really up close, you can see that there's these little things called barnacles. Now, to get an observation of something like this, you probably only need one or two pictures, but a really important thing for this is to get scale. So, it's really small and I might put something just like my finger next to it. You would probably also want to use a magnifying lens on your phone camera so you can get really close and get some of those details that my phone isn't focusing on right now. Now, I just found this and this is a pretty big snail shell. Now when you're walking on the beach, you might not think this is much of anything, but if you look closely, you'll see that there's actually a critter in here. Since the tide is so low, some of these guys have been exposed that wouldn't normally be. To get an observation for something like this, you would want to get multiple angles. Now you actually see he's blowing bubbles right now. For something like this, you would once again want to get something for scale, something like a quarter would work well. You would also want to get the different angles, like flipping it over from here, so you can actually see the underneath. You might also want to focus on the spirals here. This is a really great example of some of the unknown critters you might find at the beach. All right, now one other quick thing to mention is that while I am on the beach and I am focusing on things like shells and seaweed, also remember that there's a lot of birds. Now, I'm not going to zoom in on fo and focus on any right now, but there's a lot of seagulls around. And for something like a bird, you don't necessarily want to get too close to it because you don't want to scare it away. But you might be able to zoom in and get some of those identifying features. If you are able to have a spotting scope or binoculars, that would be a really good way to get some close-up pictures of some really good birds. And now I hand it off to you, Andrew. Thanks, Rachel. And thanks, Mark, for showing us all the different types of observations you can make, whether you're in the forest or at the beach or in your neighborhood. Why don't you follow me to go find what else I can find in my neighborhood? This is a great activity to do with your kids or your friends and neighbors. I'm taking this little guy with me on our walk over to our neighborhood park. Let's go. I made my way over here to my neighborhood park. It's a great place to get some fresh air, to go for a longer walk than just your backyard, and to make some more observations. Oftentimes in parks, there's plenty of little nooks and crannies where wild critters and plants and insects may have landed. Look in places that you normally overlook, like along fence lines, overturn some rocks, look in the corners and places that look like they've been disturbed where public works or city parks departments haven't tended to in a while. That's where you're gonna find a lot of your wild species. I hope you're starting to feel a little more comfortable making observations in iNaturalist. So be sure to remember the four components of a really good observation. One, high quality photos. Sometimes that's the whole organism, sometimes it's really close up. Be sure you're capturing really good detail. Also make sure you're making a guess and ident identification. That could be just getting it down to plant or animal, but do your best. Three, make sure your location services are turned on. Help us learn where that photo was taken. And four, make sure you take a few notes. That'll help people that are identifying your observation do a greater job at getting the ID and the species correct. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and that you're feeling more confident and ready to participate in one of the community science projects like a bio blitz or the city nature challenge. If you have questions, you'll find our contact information below. Thanks again, and we hope to see you soon. And don't forget to INAT that.